Hey everybody, it's Matthew of Mr. Domestic where we spread joy and positivity through sewing and fabric play. In this video, I am going to show you how to make your very own fabric pumpkin. Yay! Good for any time of year, but especially during this holiday part of the year, you can leave them out as long as you want to because they are too cool for school. And this is from Amy Barrickman's Crossroads Pattern of the Pumpkin Trio. She gave me permission to show y'all and walk y'all through this pattern. Make sure to buy it because you know that's cool. It's not cool to try and watch this and learn how to do this without the pattern because that's where I learned it and I just have to be fair and right. So there's a link where you can buy the pattern and learn all of the stuff that I used in this awesome, awesome project. So if you are ready to get your pumpkin on and have some fun, then before we get into the content, anytime you're enjoying this video, make sure to give it the thumbs up and do not forget to subscribe to my channel. Now let's get ready to have some fun together. <laughs> so this tutorial, I'm essentially going to be walking you through Amy Barrickman's pumpkin trio pattern through Indigo Junction and its Crossroads pattern. This was my first pattern that I used from Amy Barrickman and it opened my world to all of her amazingness and I'm super duper grateful that she allowed me to essentially demo this pattern for all of you. One thing I will not be doing, I will not be sharing any of the dimensions or measurements. I'm going to walk you through some of the trouble spots that you might, might encounter so that you can create these awesome sauce pumpkins. So, don't try to do this without the pattern. Uh, she was generous to allow me to do this. So make sure to buy the pattern because you really can't do it without the proper templates. Trust me, I've tried and I cannot create this to where it will be as awesome as it has with the pattern. So, that's what you need. You need the pattern. It comes with three sides. I'm going to be walking you through the small. As you can see in this pattern, there are two different ways to do it. There's a traditional way, and then there's a dimensional way. I'm going to walk you through the traditional way. There's a step in there where it switches over to dimensional, but I find the traditional to be harder, if either of them actually are hard, harder to sew than this one. So I'll walk you through the small version of that. And then it comes with a couple different leaves that you can do. I'm not gonna do it because I just don't feel like it, but if you want to, you can. <laughs> it looks cute like that. So, fabric, I've cut this out. I'm not gonna show you how to cut, but I did create a mirror image like this, and it just makes it a little extra ooh la la for people who see it. And then you need a piece of this. I like denim for the stems, denim or a canvas, but really anything will work. And then you'll need five strips of batting. So now we are going to go over to Tim Gunn because Felicia is having a spa retreat for a month. Tim Gunn's gonna be helping us out. So everyone say hi to Tim Gunn. So now I'm over to Tim Gunn and if you thought the actual Tim Gunn was here, no, that's the name of my machine. Let me show you. Say hi, Tim. Hey, Tim. <laughs> I'm going to set him on the middle. I do have my walking foot on. You don't need it for all of it, but I think that you need it for some of it and I'm just too lazy to switch it. So I'm just gonna have it for the whole thing. <laughs> and I have my five essentially pair of crescents and you wanna try and keep, if you're doing it to where you have a mirror, you wanna try and keep the, the each pair that you cut at the same time together, just in case there is any variance. And there are some things that I'm gonna do a smidge different just for efficiency for myself and I wanna share that with y'all. But one thing it says is to stitch at a 3 8 inch and I am totally gonna to do that for my seam allowance, I think. I'm kinda of gonna guesstimate cause I'm just gonna use what's on here. And I think that's 3 8 it might be a half, I don't know, it's gonna be cute. <laughs> And from the, the top to the bottom, essentially gonna stitch all the way over here, that pair at three eighths. Cute, 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 right here. And I'm not gonna show you like sewing all five of them. I'm just gonna show you the preparation of one pair together and then stitch the pairs. So lift that up. And boom, 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 snip it, snip it, snip it. So you have this one done, right? 
me even this out. And now we're gonna snip. Let me get my snippers. Here, if you have some, what are they called? Those like zigzag scissors. I don't know what they're called. I don't have any shearing scissors. No, they're not shearing scissors. The ones that create like the, the zigzag, but you're gonna cut here little notches. I do it about every inch. And I'll fast forward so you don't have to see this like in real time because these scissors are like not amazing. <laughs> Okay, so now I have these notched up and you're gonna do this to the other four pairs. Okay, so now I have all five of the sewn pair of crescents notched up right here. And the next step before we put these five together is to attach this, the batting that you cut out. And this is where the difference between the dimensional and the non-dimensional is. And for the dimensional, this is where I'm just going to show you, is that after you've notched it up, you're essentially going to top stitch right here per the instructions. And then it creates like a little dimension that's really cool, a really cool additional 3D element to the pumpkins. But that's easier than what this step is I found in creating and I have some tips to the traditional sewing method so I wanted to show you that but definitely make the dimensional one too because that'll add some variance and some coolness and some yay now I'm going to attach this to this and one thing that I do differently than the instructions is the instructions says to open the seam I'm not going to I'm gonna press it to one side see here and then I'm just gonna spread it open and then sew as I go I feel like it strengthens the seam and then see here I have the tension wrong on Tim gun I don't know what's going on I'll figure it out later but whenever this pulls because it's to the side, you won't see the batting. Whenever it's open, you would see the batting. So um, unless you're like a tension expert, then I would suggest doing it to the side. And then now at 3 8 of an inch, I think it's 3 8 Essentially, you just want to make sure to catch this. And I barely catch it most of the time. So I would suggest maybe making this a quarter of an inch wider. And let's go. I'll show you what I do. Just go up one side. And then I work it as I go, pulling on it instead of clipping it or pinning it. It just didn't work because of this curve for me. And I also just don't like to do that kind of stuff. <laughs> so I am going to sew as I go. And that C right here, it's like I'm pulling it to the side, spreading it right here so the seam is flush and not like bulky. And then just making sure that it's on the center of this strip of batting. And then the curve just works itself out. This is the part that like, in my opinion, walking foot is crucial. If you don't have one, like still go for it. But um, this is the part and the reason why I have my walking foot on. So one side's done and now I'm gonna just go up the other side. And then still, as I'm going, I'm gonna spread the seam just so it lays flush and doesn't like it all. What's the word I'm thinking about? Um, <laughs> I can't think of it like ugly. <laughs> I swear the older I get, the less like I remember words <laughs> and then I make up words. <laughs> okay, I'm up uh, the other side. And then let me show you. See here? Yay, I caught it! Yay! And then I'm just gonna, where's the nice scissors? Trim this off right here. And then you can cut off the little tail. And now I have one and I'm gonna do the other four. And then when I come back over to Tim, I'm gonna show you how to put them all together. Okay, so now I have sewn all five of these, trim the ends. They're good to go, nice and cute. And then I'm going to sew them together. But I wanted to show you something in this that with the crescent, one side is more bulbous and that's the bottom. And with the bottom, I use my machine to sew it all together. It suggests hand sewing, but I sew that bottom all together. And then I sew probably starting like here 
on the top of the pieces just to leave a hole in the opening so that I can turn it right side out. But I do all the machine sewing on the bulb. So just be cognizant of where the big bulb is right here see woo apple bottom right there and i'll start right here by flipping one inside out and kind of like stuffing it like a taco like ooh, it's a taco and then i'm going to start sewing here and i'm going to show you at first in real time doing one of them and then sped up doing the rest of so it so here we are over at tim let me make sure that i got that apple bottom part right line this up and then I'm going to start sewing right here. Once again, it's at three eighths. And because it fits right in there, there's no reason to pin. If you've watched my videos, I don't like to pin or clip unless I like super duper have to. And I found that pins and clips for this pattern just, I don't know, just add some bulk that's unnecessary. I'll do there and I'm even gonna back stitch right there. Here. And then now you got one. I'm gonna now I'm gonna do another one. And then essentially I line this up right here at the seams, like the mid seam right here. And then I'll flip this one like that, and then I'm gonna start to sew. The main thing as you do this. Well, two main things. Make sure to go probably an inch down here and then be aware of where the, the more bulbous part of the crescent is. And then just so, and I am going to fast forward until I get to the very end. And so now I am to the final connection essentially I'm, I've made the globe the pumpkin and I'm gonna line this up right there once again go an inch down and then so and I wanted to show you how I sew the bottom all up because I want to use my machine as much as possible on a project. I love hand sewing whenever I choose to do it. <laughs> but when I'm not in that kind of mood, like I want to machine sew. Okay, so now I'm at the end and this is another reason why I use my walking foot. I'm just gonna go over that and I'm using a universal needle. It's just a regular needle. And now I have closed the bottom up. And now I am going to put Tim Gun away and then you're gonna to have to look at my face and we're gonna do the rest of this by hand. Okay, I lied, there's one more thing to do on the sewing machine. And I've moved it to a zigzag. See, this is my, da -da -da -da. it's a zigzag stitch. And I'm going to, this thing, it was like this and I cut it in half and then you zigzag one length. And this is gonna be the exterior part. And then go, this is what I do. Go down one side and this is gonna be the final part. This all makes sense when I show you what I'm doing. Then snip it. Okay, and it says like every one inch or so, but I just estimate it cause I'm lazy. And so now see, I folded that over and I'm gonna zigzag up that. And I do about four. I don't do the whole length. I do about four. So that's one. See, I'm gonna estimate again. And like this part of the pattern is like insane amazing. Amy, you're a genius. It legit looks like a stem. Okay. Two. And I'm gonna do two more. I'll speed it up. And then, after this, no more sewing machine. Yay, 
Okay, so we are to phase two, which all in involves the hand. I've got my glue gun, which I hate generally because I think that the devil and like will always hurt you, but it's totally worth the potential pain to make these cool pumpkins. And then I have this inside out thing. I have this, I have this, my thread. I have a self-threading needle just cause I don't wanna have to thread it. And then tweezers just in case and some clippers. Okay, so now first thing is to turn this right side out. And if you didn't leave enough of a hole, you can snip it on top, but like you probably did. Then here, da -da -da -da, da -da 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 -da. boom, chaka laka 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 laka. Da -da -da. Okay, and then, oh, I need my stuffing. Helena, can you um, hand me the, the stuffing? <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that one. Thank you. And hey, you need some stuffing. So now the next thing is to stuff the pumpkin. And I know it's like real exciting to watch someone stuff something, but you stick the stuffing in the hole and it says to fill in the little, these things first. So don't fill it into the center, like fill it in exterior and then center wise. And you'll be able to tell just to, ooh, drama you'll be able to tell that it's filling in right here. So you want it to be bulbous, bulbous, instead of like all like shrinky dink, bulbous. So I'm gonna fill this in and fast forward so you don't have to watch it in real time just so that you can see the bulbosity occur. Yay! This is one dense pumpkin. Bonk, bonk. <laughs> but it's stuffed. It's bulbous. I don't know why I keep using that word. And so now it's time to like squish it. And then you have one button. I've got a button like this. Do so I have an itty bitty one? I have an itty bitty one somewhere. But I'm thinking, Helena, did you take my button, Helena? <laughs> um, I'll just use the big one. And so now I'm going to take some thread. And I'm gonna quattro it. I'm not gonna like double thread it. I'm gonna quattro thread it like this. And this is why I like this, this self-threading because you can do more than just like two. Yes, ta da ta da ta da See, ta-da. And right here, like this opening, it's all gonna go squished in there with the stem and what we're about to do, but just to secure these a little bit more, I'm gonna like do an ugly whip stitch right here. There is the option to do a ladder stitch, like if you wanna hide your stitches, but like honestly to me, I don't feel like it needs to be hidden cause it should all be hidden by the stem. And then like if it's not hidden and someone's over at your house like judging your whip stitches and your pumpkins, then they have some issues. So <laughs> I'm all about like, let's get this done like fast. And so I'm gonna ugly whip stitch it right here. And this is just, it's one, doing two things. It's cleaning up this opening. And then from this, you're gonna be able to bring this down. All of it. And you wanna be able to bring down all of the segments. You don't wanna just bring down one. And then what I'm gonna do, see, and this is where if you had a longer needle, oh, it would help. And this is harder on the larger ones. I stick the needle through and then wait to feel it wow dun, 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 like this and that is good enough for me right there and then through this you're gonna be able to pull it pull it pull it and it pulls all of those parts in and then this is where the button comes in if you wanted to try and stick the needle back through go for it um i've tried a couple times and like blood usually gets involved and so i'm not about that life and here, so right here, ta-da. And then from here, I'm gonna wrap it around. And I have, a, I have a video on how to sew a button. It's kind of like that, but that secures it and see how it's through. And then just so that it's cute on the bottom, I do that and then that, and then it's like a cute button. See, boom, like that. And then I'm gonna wrap it around a couple more times 
And then this is secure. And why it's secure is because of what I am about to do. Boom. Hot glue. See, hot glue saves the day. I just put a little dollop of hot glue underneath the button. And ah, 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 it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt. And then it's good. It's not going anywhere. And then now we've got the top in this opening, but we have got to create the stem. And so the steps in creating the stem. This is the inner half of it. The half that doesn't have the zigzags on it is gonna be the inside. And try to do this as tight as you can. Roll this, because then it'll look super duper cute as a stem. And I'm going monochrome with this because I didn't have like another color that would have looked cute with this color pumpkin. But this is another way to accent it. And then grab this one and then continue rolling it as tautly as possible. And boom, 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 shake the room, boom, boom, boom. Ah, ah, I can't wait to show you this because it is, the first time I saw this, it was crazy pants. Look at that, look at that. I mean, you're gonna trim it and make it cute, but like, that is crazy. And this is where I'm gonna take some more hot glue because now that it's out, I've already broken it in. I'm gonna put it right here. And this is why I zigzagged this too, is I'm going to essentially like camouflage it right here to that zigzag and you are not going to be able to see it. And if you wanted to stitch it, then go for it, but like I feel confident in what's going on here to where it's gonna be secure. And then I like to like flatten the top, and then this is where you get some scissors and clean up the top. And if you don't clean up the top too well, it's fine. It, you can just call it rustic and have it a day. <laughs> so this is the stem. And next you gotta stick it in here. So if you did this too tightly, then you won't be able to stick it far, but I left enough room to where first a dollop a day keeps the doctor away or something like that. Okay, there, ooh, it is hot, hot, hot. And then stick it in, get some twisters on. Ugh. Ugh. There we go. Ah! This is so cute, like this. And then one other thing, I just take a little bit more of the hot glue, get it up in there. And this is just to help it give it some more bulbosity. <laughs> Hashtag bulbosity, y'all. And then I'll squeeze this in like this. And then, wait for it to dry, wait for it to dry, wait for it to dry, boom, it is dry. And you have got yourself a handy dandy fabric pumpkin. What? Yay! <laughs> so cool. So make sure that you get Amy Barrickman's Crossroads pattern of the pumpkin trio. She has a Facebook group. She even has a YouTube channel that have awesome tutorials and videos on it. So make sure to check her out and say thank you for allowing me to share this pattern with you and show you how to make your own fabric pumpkins. So if you enjoyed this video, got a laugh or a tip or a trick or two, make sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Keep it positive y'all. Mr. Domestic out.